Lander's Tech Tips here, now but what up guys, it's Crimson, and before we start, let me just say, I've owned the last four iPhone generations, and I've never reviewed them. Reason being, they're all the fucking same. So, don't think of this as an iPhone 14 Pro Max review, think of it as THE iPhone review. I've been using this as my daily pretty much since its launch week, so I just wanted to get this review right. So grab your lube and the nearest phallic shaped object, and let's get right into this. It's very rare that a company, especially Apple, makes an innovation that's genuinely cool. This year though, they've nailed it. The Dynamic Island is more slept on than one of Cardi B's alleged victims. The problem with iPhones since the iPhone X is they've all tried to hide the front camera, either with a notch, a pill, or a hole punch. Even my favourite implementation of this, the OnePlus 7 Pro, is just a clever workaround since they have to put the front camera somewhere. The Dynamic Island though is built different. They've turned a hardware necessity into a software feature, so seamlessly that it's easy to forget that it's hardware. And you can tell Apple are proud of this. The wallpaper actively draws attention to it, unlike the older models which feel like they're embarrassed of it, like your mum and parents even. And they should be proud of it. It's more than just a gimmick. It shows face ID, paying, music, visualizer, which changes color according to the album art and is actually reacts to the music. Timers, AirPods connecting, charging, calling, silent mode, airdrop, and more. It's not just a gimmick, it's a genuinely cool feature. As with all Apple products, the materials are amazing. We've got some really scratch resistant glass on the front screen, and some cool frosted glass on the back, which sometimes looks and feels like metal. This combined with the stainless steel sides, which are complete fingerprint magnets, make it feel really premium. But that comes at a cost. This thing is heavier than the blue-haired non-binary chick in art class, especially coming from the Nothing Phone 1, which is the exact same footprint. It makes the Nothing feel like, well, nothing, yet somehow it doesn't feel uncomfortable to hold. I'm not going to mention the specs, or the processor, of, or the RAM, or the battery, because they genuinely don't matter. Their processors are leagues above anything that Android has. 4 gigs of RAM on iPhone feels like 12 on Android and the software manages the battery so well that it's completely irrelevant. Speaking of the software, iOS has evolved so much in the last four years, and I think that's why hacking iPhones have died. I mean, especially since what you'd usually mod to your iPhone, like dark mode, custom icons, custom fonts, night shift, lock screen customizations, and all that is still just here in iOS 16 now. And it runs great. I meant to have a stutter in the four months of using this as my daily. Whether that be gaming, doom scrolling through TikTok and Instagram, or recording and editing a 4K video. Everything's perfect, it just works, and it looks good doing it. About 4K, this puppy has a 50 megapixel camera now, which is so high res that you can practically count skin cells. Flanking it is a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, which doubles as a macro lens, and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens. The extra detail you can get with the 50 megapixel mode is great, and in general, it's just one of the best camera systems ever. It's Pixel 7 Pro and Samsung S23 Ultra level good, but it's better and worse. Better because video on this thing is more crisp than Japan in 1945, which can't be said for the Android competitors, and worse because it can't compete with the level of zoom that you get with the Samsung. Oh. Oh, oh, oh fuck, shit. Uh, but you can get some seriously impressive macro shots. And the video speaks for itself. Every shot in this video that the iPhone 14 wasn't in was shot with it. The others being shot with a standard 13. The sensor is so big that it gives natural background blur without the need of portrait mode. And overall, it's just a great camera. Overall, this is an unbeatable package. If you have the money, which not a lot of people do, as the standard starts at 850 the Pro is 1,100, and the Pro Max is 1,200 pounds. Then it's the best option out there. Pretty much every carrier does contracts for it. It will easily last for five years with constant updates. The battery life lasts longer than Queen Elizabeth, so it should be good for years. And the build quality and design should hold up. I can't recommend it enough. Obviously, if you don't really care about phones, then just go for the normal 14 or 14 Plus. They're just as capable as the Pro, but they don't have the telephoto camera or the macro mode. And if you want the best of the best and you just hate money, the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max are amazing, premium devices. But you don't just buy an iPhone for an iPhone. It's part of a larger ecosystem that once you're in, it's hard to leave. You can get notifications and alarms to your watch, open up your MacBook out and about, charge your phone with MagSafe, use universal control, and use your Mac's keyboard and trackpad with your iPad. Use Sidecar to wirelessly use your iPad as a secondary display. 
Then close it up, take it home, and continue where you left off with it hooked up to a mouse, keyboard, and monitor. There's something magical and seamless about these devices working so perfectly with each other. They're all as generic as the white girl who drives a Fiat 500 and believes in star signs and getting Starbucks every day. If you ask a normal person to tell me what phone it is out of the iPhone X all the way to the standard iPhone 14, I bet they wouldn't be able to. Same with the iPhone 6 to the iPhone 8, and same with the software. iOS 1 to 6 are identical, iOS 7 to 11 are also the same, and iOS 12 to 16 all feel the same. The result is, if you do upgrade from iPhone to iPhone, it doesn't feel like a new exciting experience. You pretty much can continue where you left off, and sometimes forget you even have a new phone. It's not got the same quirks as having a new Android, where you get a completely new version of Android, some core unique hardware and capabilities to try out. It's just not got that magic. So this will be my last iPhone review for a couple years, possibly longer. But uh, thanks for watching. Peace.